All right, YouTube, how's it going? This is Dave. We are back uh, for the 50,000 mile review of the 2021 GMC Sierra Duramax 3 liter. Uh, in reality, it's actually 51,482 ish miles, uh, but that's because October hasn't been particularly kind to me. Uh, my dad was unfortunately in the hospital, and then when I was uh, in the hospital, I'll get these windows closed, uh, in the hospital, um, you know, hanging out with them. I got sick, <laughs> so I got COVID. Two and a half years of dodging it, and uh, bang, uh, got sick. So it, it kicked my butt, but I'm doing a lot better. Dad's doing great. So we're trying to get back to, to normal now, and ooh, orange SS over there. Cool. I don't know if you can see it in the camera. Right there. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, we're doing the 50,000-mile review for the uh, Sierra, and um, I'm, I'm going to be you know, honest with you. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. But overall, as usual, you've heard me say this, I still love the truck. I mean, right now, diesel prices are absolute garbage. I mean, we're damn near $6 a gallon where I'm at, which is by far an all-time high. Um, but the truck is treating me well. I mean, for, for the, the driving I'm doing, there's a stupid auto start stop. I usually turn it off. But um, I'm actually heading down to Napa right now to get uh, some brake pads. And I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but overall, truck is doing awesome. Fuel economy seems to be really good. I don't know if it's just maybe the time of the year or I'm just being um, a little less uh, heavy-footed. Uh, but I am like, very, very strongly averaging between 29 to 32 miles per gallon with like a lot more in the 30s than in the 20s these days and i'm driving it i think part of it is the, just the consistency of driving and not a lot of starting and stopping when i'm driving home and i think that really does help i seem to have gotten into a rhythm uh but it's been doing really well in fuel economy uh you know consistently doing the oil changes no no issue there i actually have a fuel filter change i gotta do again uh because i think i'm at like uh 13 on that or something like that so i'm gonna knock that out um but like i said i'm heading down to get some brake pads uh, mainly because if I look at the sense of brake pad life, it's saying 66% for the front and 80% for the rear. Uh, at, you know, 51,000, almost 51,500 miles. Um, from what I remember, that's pretty damn good. However, the fronts are have gotten very loud. I would say within the last 5,000 miles, lots of, of squeaking. At pretty much out of nowhere. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pick up the pads because at some point I'm going to need them. I check the rotors, uh, you know, just do the 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 um, calibrated fingernail test, and the rotors still seem like smooth as glass. So I don't know, maybe something got in behind it. I'm going to pull that apart today, take a look at. It, but I figure I'm home. If I really do need them, I want to try to get them. And it looks like Napa, the local Napa, actually has them um, in stock, which is one one of my gripes, okay? Um, man, they're doing so a lot of uh, work on the railroad here. Um, one of my gripes with um, the uh, with the car, because um, with the truck, just I, never been, like, an issue with, like, per se, like, newness. But for some reason, it's really hard to get parts for this truck um, in a timely fashion, at least around me. It's always got a few-day wait. Whereas I used to be able to just run down to the store and grab brake pads. But, like, it sounds like Napa can get them in here, you know, today. So I'm going to go pay for them and hope to God the um, interwebs weren't lying to me when they said that. So um, I'm going to go take care of this. We'll head back home. We'll do the walk around. I'll talk about a few things, the things I love about the truck, things that are kind of getting on my nerves. But uh, let me take care of this, and I'll catch up with you in a few. Right, guys so we're, we're back here with the uh uh sierra and uh, i'm gonna, about to pull the front tire off and um main reason that i'm doing that and i had mentioned this uh earlier is that i'm getting some uh loud uh, scre uh screeching in the front it's not all the time it seems to be like after it's been sitting for a little while so i've got the lug nuts off i got the truck up i want to pull this off i got new brake pads that i just picked up today in case I need to do it, but I want to take a look, and I figured you guys can discover with me to see how bad it is. So let me get the camera set up. That's good enough here. Let's get this guy off. Oh. All right, guys. So I, 
I'm, I got it in my hand now, and uh, you may hear there are some uh, vehicles in the background. That's my kids riding on the quads. Um, so, I am wrong. I am 100% wrong. So, and I will admit that. I don't know 100% where the screeching is coming from, but these guys have, and it's hard to get there to see it, but that's, there we go. That's Pat right there. Right there and right there. So, the inner... I can't tell if there is something that is in there. So what I'm going to do, bad, just bad picture, bad videography here. But this uh, guy said, now let me see if I can turn this around here. So sorry about that. Uh, it's maybe a little too close. But so the sensors are saying that it's got 60% plus on the front. I wasn't sure if that was correct, but I'm a believer now. So. Um, I'm not going to change the pads. I am going to hose it down, though. I'm going to get in here with the uh, brake clean, really kind of hose it down and give it a little spin. But the rotor looks good. There's no pitting or anything on it. So I think we're in luck on this. All right, so I just got uh, this guy. Non-sponsored, but uh, cheap, cheap stuff, effective. I'm going to get in there, give her a good hose down, clean up in the front here, see if maybe I can... Uh, Get this guy to uh, whatever was in there, blow it out. But it dries super fast. Clean up, yeah, you can see there is definitely still hot. Um, it's also very solvented, so it's uh, it's uh, fluffing away. But uh, nice and clean, and uh, hopefully we will uh, have the uh, the noise limited, but. Uh, honestly, I think I think we're in luck here. So I'm gonna throw her back together. I'm going to um, once I get her back together, I'm actually gonna go and put a new fuel filter on. So I do still have that sitting up there. I'm gonna get that done. I can do that pretty easily without even really getting underneath the vehicle to do it. So we'll knock that out because it's about 51,000 miles on it. So what's up, bud? Coming over? Checking out? This is uh, this is the dude on his uh, new uh, ATV. You gonna ride or are you gonna just stare at the camera? Hi, why don't you go ride? There he goes. Tearing away in it. But uh, yeah, so let me, uh, I'm going to, I'm gonna go and um, pull the filter off and get down to business on that once I put this back together. Okay, well, see, you remember this guy? I got a video, I'll post it up here in the corner, but uh, this is the guy we're gonna loosen up. You need a M36 a millimeter. Uh, to get this guy off very straightforward and then i got the new filter i'll go through that real quick for you again i'm not gonna go through all the specifics but it's pretty straightforward to get this out so i gotta get a drip pan and let's get down to business yeah so i got my drain pan here got the filter off you can see she's looking kind of dirty we got the blue o-ring here on the body of the uh, filter housing do not forget this guy right here super easy to forget probably be fine if you just decided not to, use, to replace it, but it comes with the filter. So make sure you replace that as well. So we'll get this guy drug out. This is gonna drip a little bit. I'm gonna wipe her down and then I will bring it out and uh, replace the filter. All right, so we got the housing pretty clean. Diesel's horrible, it smells horrible. It's, hor it, uh, you know, it's a pain in the butt to clean up, but you can see huge difference. Let me grab the old filter. Got that? All right, so here's the old one. So this, if this doesn't tell you, how gross the fuel is that you're running through your engine then i don't know what to tell you all right so this guy you got a nice freshie here ready to rock and roll i got this off amazon first things first get her down in here you gotta make sure she seats okay so get her in and make sure it goes all the way down okay and that feels good that feels about as far in as i can get it so i muscled it down we're good we got a nice fresh seal in there we got this seal, and this is what they give you, right? So they give you this in the package, the small seal that I have to replace underneath, and then the big boy here. So we're just gonna very gently get under here with a pick, bring it up. Probably should have done this before I put the uh, new one on. And we're gonna grab a little bit of uh, paper towel here to seal this, or to clean it, I mean, I'm sorry. Just to clean the surface a little bit. Diesel is just so nasty. It's, uh, I opened up my fuel can underneath the car underneath the truck there and it was uh smelled like popcorn because it had ethanol in it all right so 
this guy. Put the fresh one on it, get it around there. Roll her down. Yeah, you can see tension, a lot more tension on this one than the previous one. So we'll just give her a good roll. Make sure she's in the groove. Across the board. There we go. I apologize, it's a motocross track behind my uh, house here. My kids are going nuts. So, And then this guy is ready to go. So now, I just got to take the old one off underneath there, and we'll put the new one in, and you're done. It's really that simple. So, so we cycled it about two or three times. We'll have to see. We'll fire it up right now and see if we can uh, get a good start. A little bit prolonged start, but sounds good. So I think we're in business. I'm going to take her out. We're going to do a little uh, driving around. We're going to ch check the brakes, see how they sound. But overall, I think we're in good shape. Um, yeah, that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. So let's go take her for a ride, see if we hear anything. So we're out. We're rolling. The truck feels good. Nothing really wrong. Interesting thing is I do not hear the squeak. So I'm hoping that that means that... Um, Doing the um, brake cleaner on it helped. Uh, pretty surprised. Um, filter looked bad. <laughs> so um, I'm going to give you the rundown now. I promise that. Sorry, throat's uh, uh, voice is uh, <clears throat> pardon, a little trashed. Um, so I think we'll do it what I don't like since I'm always telling you what I do like. Um, Wow, that's a serious Halloween display back there. You saw that over there. Um, main things I don't like. The, let's see, I'm, I'm having the error again. So the, the code, it was the same code again, has something to do um, with the, uh, the system heating, the dev system. Um, did a movie on, uh, did a video on that code a little while back. Um, it's like oxygen sensor and a couple other readiness, the thing or something, but, um, it's the same one I had in the, in the video, uh, recently. I'll try to figure out how to edit that in so you can actually see where, uh, you know, which video I was talking about, but, uh, it's the same code, cleared it out, has it come back, just kind of popped up out of nowhere while I was driving again. Um, annoying, not the end of the world. Um, the brake squealing thing was really annoying, but now I can't really say that that was necessarily this vehicle's problem because, um, so far it's not doing it again. And, and it looks like the pad life, it's saying 66% and 80 in the rear. So, uh, I, it's accurate. Okay, was not the wear indicators for making the noise. I did spray them down real good. It was definitely coming from the front left. That is uh, not happening anymore. So not as big a complaint. I have 51,511 miles on it as as I am uh, going through this. Um, the auto start stop thing is, is uh, you know, it's that first world problem thing but man is it goddamn annoying because I actually had a problem the other day where I had to get through an intersection and the thing it was like perfectly bad timing and I went to go hit the gas and it had it was just shutting off and then I tried to get moving and and the truck like jolted a little bit and then got itself back up but like if you're in an emergency situation and that thing does that, that's really bad if it, it ends up doing it. I think the main thing, and I don't know if I can replicate it here, uh, it's particularly bad when it's wet. And I think it has something to do with the rear suspension on this truck. It has nothing to do with the three liter, okay? So I'm kind of hitting the truck a, as a whole. But there's something in the suspension geometry of this truck that um, when you're making... It's usually on a left-hand turn, but but you will notice it on a right-hand turn. And it's a particularly bad road. Like, if it's a rutted road, you're going onto a highway, kind of like what I'm doing right now. Um, and you're turning, and it hits the bump. The, I've noticed it'll do this when I'm just highway driving, and you hit a pretty serious bump. The whole ass end of the truck, depending on how wet it is out, will kick one way or the other. 
to the point where the one time when I was driving when it was wet out and I did it, the truck almost spun. It spun to the point where I was almost 45 degrees to the uh, to the center or center barrier. Um, now, of course, I didn't freak out when it did that, but because I kind of knew it was coming, I just didn't think it was going to be that bad. So that was pretty scary. That's something I don't know if if this that's just like a compromise in what they're doing uh, in the suspension design to soften it up and make it good because. 90% of the time when I'm driving it back and forth, this is actually a really comfortable truck. Like, I mean, I don't have the super nice interior. It's, you know, just the, the cloth interior. Um, I've complained about before, like, if you, like, if you're just driving and it's raining, you got a wet coat and it drips down on it, it looks like you spilled food on the seat. And, it, and it's just like, I mean, there's plenty of cup holders and stuff. I'm not like, you know, of course I'm a big dude, so I obviously eat a lot, but like, I'm, you're not, I'm not like spilling things on the seat nonstop. So it's a little bit annoying. I don't, I'm not sure why that does that. Um, so one of the things that's a curse and a blessing on the truck is the front end design. Uh, obviously I'm driving this a decent amount. Of course, some people will immediately say, oh, you don't drive that. That's baby numbers. You need to pump them up. I'm like, all right, dude, like, you know, 18 months, 18, 19 months of driving and I got 50, you know, almost 52,000 miles on it. So let's like, let's calm down a little. Um, it's a lot. It's a decent amount. It's more than the average, significantly more than the average. All right. So, um, you know, there's a beautiful looking truck. However, that front is just a giant battering ram and it catches every damn thing that the road has to kick up. So yeah, the front end is taking a beating. It's very, lots of chips. <laughs> along the front uh lots of bug stains the bugs get caught underneath it this is dumb all right like this is a dumb one it just i, I th i'm just i'm kind of going around the horn on this and i'm just i'm hitting every note that i can hit all right the ra radio antenna loosens up uh, say the bumps <laughs> like the bu now i got a new uh, mount here for my uh um I'm using my iPhone because unfortunately my GoPros are acting up so I can't like they're like something I don't know if it's the GoPro or it's the, the SIM card that's in it uh, the um, micro SD card because all of a sudden it's just like losing video left and right but um, the antenna loosens constantly and I, I don't know if it's just a virtue of uh, like you know the design or what but like I'll just go out and uh periodically check. I was like, man, that thing looks like it's shaking a lot. I'll go out, and the damn thing's loose, like, to the point where it's, like, I'm turning it, you know, three, four times completely around to get her tightened back up. I don't want to be driving them down the road and launch, so I may go with the little, like, one of the shorties um, down the road, see how it does with the signal. Uh, oh, one more thing. One more thing that was frustrating, and I got a pick of it. Sometimes it'll just say you gotta continue driving because it's in the middle of like a regen or something like that. Uh, cleaning the filter, particular filter. I got it, but like when I'm driving and I'm going to pick up my children from school and I pull into a line of which there's like five to six lines that are like 20, 30 cars each lined up and I'm pulling in, it goes on right there. I'm not pulling out a line to do that. So it's a little annoying and inconvenient uh, for GM and, and Knowing how the feedback is on this truck, my truck, you know, has treated me very well. So I'm not going to complain at all. However, I'm not going to say that the concern from a lot of the other folks and the feedback isn't rattling around this giant head. Um, so when you're in a scenario where it's yelling at you and telling you to keep the truck, to keep driving, and I can't do that. Makes me a little nervous that something's going to take a dump in the rest of the, uh, uh, you know, vehicles when I go to fire it up. Luckily, it didn't do that. It did stay on for quite a while to the point where I was finally able, once I was able to really kind of take it for a ride, it went away. So it's just kind of like, woo, <laughs> but definitely makes you nervous. So I think that's like from a, from an overall perspective, like for, oh, and <laughs> so here we go. The rattling in the back, I still don't know what the hell it is. I'm assuming that it's something to do either with the with the shackle that's back there. 
uh, the you know this uh, the spring pocket. I'm sorry, shackle. Um, something rattling back there, or it has something to do with the uh, the fuel tank or something that is because it's 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 a weird sound. It's a it's a very a thuddy sound, and it usually only happens when I'm backing out. And it's kind of like in an, a weird articulation out of my ridiculously sloped driveway. <clears throat> so, for a truck that's really only a year and a half, you know, has a lot of decent mileage on it. Sometimes sounds like it's a little bit older than that, like you know, like like twenty damn years old. Uh, but overall, though, um, I'm nitpicky. Uh, generally, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta kind of end on this. I do love the truck. Fifty thousand miles. I'm hoping I get you know two hundred and fifty thousand miles out of this thing if I'm lucky. But um, overall. I love I love this truck. I love what it what it's done for me so far. It's been a uh, pretty pretty cool um, seeing what this thing is doing from a fuel economy perspective. Like I said before, it's been it, it's been seems to have been going up. And I think you know I'm not going to say that like something's like not you know it's breaking in or something like that. And uh, I just think that maybe my driving style and like how I'm. I'm not as driving as aggressively or what, but I do know that when I'm driving down to work, I'm going 80, 85, but I'm kind of, I think it really matters more, and this is probably like a no, yeah, no duh, on keeping a constant speed while I'm driving versus speeding up, slowing down, slowing, you know, and like that's when you consume a lot more fuel. Um, but I mean, I'm averaging 30 to 32. I was, you know, 28 to 32 miles per gallon, pretty much routinely. And I'm really not, woo, that's some loud bikes. So, I mean, I, I really, I'm, I'm really happy with what this thing's doing. I, I um, even though fuel is almost $6 a gallon for diesel, I, I'm, and I'm not going to sugarcoat it, that sucks, man. Like, that really, really sucks. Um,. But I can't do anything about that, right? I bought this truck. I, it's treated me very well. You know, routine maintenance has been pretty straightforward. Um, so overall, I really can't complain. It's it's she's she's treated me well. Um, like I said, comfort pretty darn nice. Towing, we had that towing video a while back. It's been great. And now with the brake life, I mean, this is insane. I got fifty one thousand five hundred miles. On it, I still got over 60% on the front pad and 80% in the back. I might get 100,000 miles out of these damn things. Like, I don't know if it's gonna, you know, kind of start exponentially wearing. So I'm not gonna, um, yeah, I'm not going to press my luck if it looks like it's starting to go down or it doesn't feel right. But uh, I, I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty darn happy from from the overall perspective maintenance perspective and i granted if if i drove it a lot more like around town i suspect next year when i'm back in this area exclusively and not driving highway all the time everything's gonna go down pad life will go down wear will go up all that stuff but um at fifty thousand miles man i mean so far you know i did list a few of those things being a big crybaby but it, it's it's she's really treated me well i'm pretty darn happy with what she's been able to do and uh, I'm really, I really am looking forward to seeing what happens after, you know, the next 20, you know, next 20 to uh, 50,000 miles. See if things kind of start falling off a cliff or not. But um, hopefully you guys will be with me. I appreciate you guys hanging on here. This is a little bit longer one. A lot of bit more rambling perhaps than uh, what I probably needed to do. But uh I'm telling you all the good with the bad, guys. So, I mean, this truck's treating me very well, all things considered. Yeah, there's some rattles here and there. Yeah, there's some weirdness, um, some noises starting from uh, the, the brakes and stuff. But, I mean, I just proof right here. It's great. Maintenance, super easy. Changing the oil, super easy. Fuel filter, super easy. Death, super easy. Filling it up with diesel, way too easy <laughs> so um i think i'm gonna go this way instead but uh again guys thanks for watching i appreciate uh you guys what's going on here go dude i appreciate you guys uh watching this uh video and if you have any questions don't hesitate to reach out to me um and as always keep that shiny side up take care